Welcome to Fantastic Plastic, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. In Fantastic Plastic, I'll be presenting strategies and techniques for injection molded plastic part design using SolidWorks CAD software. I'm Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer with the Demonic Group. The Demonic Group is a full service product development consultancy located just outside Chicago, Illinois. Previously in Fantastic Plastic, we took a look at ways we could add draft to planar and circular type geometry. In this installment, we're going to move on from those kinds of geometry and take a look at how we can add draft, correct draft, to surface features. Once again, we're going to be using the draft analysis tool to determine where we have appropriate draft on our model and where draft is still required. So I've opened up this rear large plastic shroud that we've seen before in SOLIDWORKS and I'm going to turn on the draft analysis to evaluate the exterior surfaces. This part requires three and a half degrees of draft for the required texture so I'll type in three and a half degrees. And we can actually see on the outside here that there's a couple areas there we do not have enough draft. If we mouse over we see that we're almost at about 2.2 degrees of draft at the parting line through the upper portion of the surface we're pretty good but once again we have some areas here in yellow where we do not quite have enough draft towards the parting line and this may cause drag marks uh, on the texture when the parts ejected from the tool so this is surface type geometry this was built with a large boundary surface So if I roll back in the tree here so I can't just use the parting line draft tool and select this edge here uh, because this is a arc kind of crowned piece of surface geometry and the reason that this part does not have enough draft is that the surface tools are not explicitly defined or define their geometry. There's no direction in SOLIDWORKS of how this surface should look between this profile and this profile short of these guide curves giving it direction. And So what this is causing is that wherever we have a guide curve on the surface we actually do have the correct three degrees of draft if I was to show these input sketches. So I'm, I'm pretty good through here, but because I'm not giving any direction to the surface, I'm not giving any instructions to SOLIDWORKS of how the surface should look, we end up having these portions of the surface that do not quite have enough draft. So I've actually been able to go in and correct this geometry, and the way we're going to correct this geometry is using a reference surface that will help give direction uh, along the parting line. So at three and a half degrees here, if we zoom in, I've eliminated that portion of yellow and I now have three, at least three and a half degrees at the parting line. So I'm going to roll back up the tree to that boundary surface and what I've had to do is create a new surface extrude feature. So previously this sketch was being used to define one of the directions of my surface. So what I've done is I've create a second feature with that sketch, a surface extrude with three and a half degrees of draft. So if I turn on my draft analysis now and evaluate this surface, I see that this surface now is three and a half degrees of draft. What this allows me to do is I'll be able to make this surface tangent to my reference surface, forcing it to be uh, at least at three and a half degrees of draft, if not more, at the parting line. It's a little portion down here, you may have noticed it didn't have enough draft, but that portion is actually going to be cut away, so I'm not really concerned about that right now. So editing our feature, you'll see that I now have my open group here. I've used the selection manager to pick the outside edges, and also added the tangency to face relation. One other thing I did have to do to go and correct this was if we turn on the flat tree display, so we can see the order of my sketches. I create the surface extrude and then these additional sketches are in the tree. So what I did here is I went in, I added a little known relation which is the tangent face relation. So the way we can do that is by selecting the sketch entity, the edge of the surface and the face I'd like to and then I can add the tangent face relation. So I've now actually made this uh, arc tangent to this face here. So this is a really powerful little known relation in SOLIDWORKS. So if I did need to increase the draft uh, for a higher or a lesser degree of texture, all I would need to do is just edit the draft angle on this input surface and my arc would automatically update. So I've gone in and made the changes to all of the, these uh, sketch entities which help shape the surface. And so we'll see in our direction one we have 
those profiles. Once again, that open group set the tangent. And one thing I need to, needed to do here was after setting the tangency to face relation in the surface, I needed to increase the tangent influence. So turning on the curvature display, we're going to turn on our curvature combs. And we only need them in direction 2. And we're going to increase the scale and the density. And if we zoom in a little bit, if I was to change the tangent influence back to 0, what actually happens is that the surface inflects a little bit here. That's a flat spot. So increasing the tangent influence slider, what this does is give more preference to the shape of this surface rather than the shape of these guide curves, which is going to force it to be at least at 3.5 degrees, if not more, along the parting line. So you can see the big difference once again at 0. We are not giving enough information to SOLIDWORKS. We want to have more preference to this face. So we'll increase that tangent influence slider to 100% and we fix that issue. Another thing I'm a huge proponent of is turning off merge tangent faces. If I had this on, this would make one large surface. I like having SOLIDWORKS automatically break the surface up into its component parts between the uh, input curves here. So when working with surface geometry, we need to be aware of giving extra information to SOLIDWORKS to properly shape our surface. And when it comes to adding draft to surface features, that extra information is going to be in the form of a helper surface or a reference geometry. So this is going to be a extruded surface with the sketch being the parting line profile here with at the required degree of draft for the texture we'd like to uh, work with. So whenever you're doing surface modeling of an injection molded plastic part needs to have draft. Remember, any surface that comes and touches the, the parting line, it needs to have a reference surface made to it, and that draft angle needs to be set up in the reference surface. I hope you enjoyed this week's SOLIDWORKS video tutorial presented by the Damani Group. Please subscribe to the Damani Group on YouTube by clicking our logo on the bottom right of the screen to stay up to date on new video releases. As well, click the SOLIDWORKS icon to be taken to our website where you can download the example SOLIDWORKS files used in this week's video. And finally, check out other great content by the Damani Group, Will It Fill It and Surfaces and Splines by clicking the video links on the left of the screen.